Hello everyone, welcome to this video all about arithmetic operations, which is a type of number question. This video in particular is going to discuss the topic of addition. So let's begin by reading a short description of what we can expect in addition questions. Addition is finding the total or sum of two or more numbers. Generally, all additions can be solved by placing the numbers on top of each other and lining them up. If you were asked to add two numbers, RR and QQ, the working out would look something like this. This allows the addition to be visualized and makes the working out easier. Addition problems can be straightforward, asking you to solve the addition of numbers directly, or can come in the pro form of problems where addition will have to be utilized to solve for an unknown. Okay, so addition is one of the most fundamental things in mathematics. I'm sure you've been exposed to the concept of addition since you were very young. It's simply the finding the sum or the total of a bunch of different numbers. Now, the issue is that as we get older, addition related questions do get more challenging and they're just not uh, numbers that we can do in our heads anymore. Or, well, I can't do it in my head anymore, so if you can do it, absolute props to you. But for the rest of us who can't do addition in our heads, this is the format that really, really helps us figure out the answer very accurately and fairly quickly without the use of a calculator. And that is, of course, an issue since we're not allowed to use calculators until we get into high school. So for these questions, we have to then and for any number of addition, we, as long as we align the numbers in columns like this example shows, we can practically do any addition. So let's make up a random number, 4,657 plus um, 183. So if we want to do this addition, all we need to do is align the numbers starting from the right. So we write down the, the numbers 4, 6, 5, 7 plus and we always align it from the smallest side. So align the 183 so that the units are in the same column, the tens are in the same column, hundreds and are in the same column, and thousands are in the same column. It doesn't matter if the thousands doesn't exist for this second number, that's just how we do so. Then all we need to do is figure out the answer by looking at each um, column in order. So again, we always start out with the smallest number and do the addition like so. Since we're dealing with much, much smaller numbers, uh, much smaller than the numbers we're dealing with, it becomes much easier to figure out the answer in this format. So again, starting off with the unit, 7 plus 3 is 10. Now, because the answer that we got is a double digit number, it's obviously not going to fit into this single place value. So what we do is put down the last number. Uh, so of 10, we've got the number in the units column and the one in the tens column. So we can only put down the units number and the tens number one will actually have to go to the next column because that's where the tens columns likes to hang out. That's where they are all aligned. Now the rest of the addition is done exactly the same way. We just read the next column. What is one plus five plus eight? So 1 plus 5 is equal to 6, plus 8 is equal to 14. We do the exact same thing again. Even though the answer is 14, we know the answer is actually going to be 140 because this is, the, this is technically the addition of 50 plus 80 plus 10. So the exact same thing needs to happen. The number in the tens unit can actually be written down, but the number in the hundreds unit has to be kicked out of the tens column. It's too big for us. So we need to put it up top in the next column. One plus six plus one, uh, that's equal to eight, and four plus zero is equal to four. So we figured out the answer all without the help of a calculator. So we can actually do that for, uh, it doesn't matter how many numbers that you're adding. For example, if you wanted to find four, six, five, seven, plus 183 plus uh, 4 plus 73, you can all do the addition like the exact same way. Just make sure you align the numbers 
uh, 183 plus 4 plus 73. And you would do it the exact same way. Oops, that looks quite ugly. <laughs> You do it the exact same way. You simply align the columns and do the addition and see what number you get. And that is the result of the calculation. Now, I won't go through the actual calculation because the steps are exactly the same, but it goes to show how you can use the simple technique to add even the most complicated of numbers. Just make sure that your columns are properly aligned and you'll probably never have any issues. So as long as we read the question thoroughly and understand what the question wants from us, we can then utilize this technique to figure out the answer every time. So let's see if we can do so by trying out this example question here. In this example question, it says a round robin tennis game is being played between eight friends. The nature of a round robin game is that each player must play against every other person once. In this scenario, how many games were played in total? So I don't know about you, but I'm not a big fan of tennis and I have no clue what a round robin tennis game is. Thankfully, the question has specified that that the condition of a round robin game is that we need to play against every other person in the team once. So we can use this information even if you're a person like me who has no idea anything about tennis to answer the question. So uh, we've got eight friends here and say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that every player has to play against another person. So say, for example, this guy, we're going to focus on this guy. This person needs to play against all of these people. Now, since there are eight friends and we're focusing on this person, that means that there's seven friends left that this person needs to play with. So uh, person number one plays seven times. Then we see that because this person has then played with all of these people, let's now focus on the next person. This guy needs to also play with everybody else in the team. That's exactly what we did with the previous guy. But something has changed because remember that this person has already played with this person. So if, when we're focusing on the second guy, we can't say that he's playing with this first guy since that's already happened. Therefore, the only remaining people that this second person can play with is all of these guys. So this time, there's only one, two, three, four, five, six players to play with. Whoops. And you can quickly see that that's a pattern that we're going to see with the rest of the game players. So one more time, if we focus on this third person here, this person also needs to play with all of the friends. But we already saw that this person has played with this guy, so it doesn't make sense to count this person playing with this guy since that's the same game. So again, this person has also played with the second person. So this third person can only play with the remaining team players, which are these people. So that's one, two, three, four, five players. So now we can see the pattern, hopefully. Every time we go down the playlist, they have one less play person to match up against since they, that match has already been accounted for. So the number of games that are being counted, even if we don't go through each of the examples, we can tell it's going to be 7 plus 6 plus 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 until there can't be any more games played by the players. So we have just found the number sentence that the question needed us to find to figure out the answer. So now that all that's left is to figure out the answer. So in any other scenario, I would suggest to use this formula or well, it's not really a formula, but this method to figure out the answer. But in this case, we're dealing with kind of small numbers and we can use a trick here, a secret trick that I'm going to tell you that saves a lot of time. And I'm fairly certain that most of you know how to add numbers to 10. It's quite quick. It's quite easy. So 
The fun thing about addition is that you can do addition in any order as long as the number sentence is only made of pluses or minuses. So we can actually make lives make our lives so much easier by recognizing that seven plus three is equal to ten, six plus four is equal to ten, and that seems to be it. But this is equal to ten and this is equal to ten. So together they equal to 20 and we've got the remaining numbers 5 plus 2 plus 1. So we can very quickly figure out that the total must equal to 28. And so the answer must be option is C. So addition has a bunch of tips that or tricks that you can employ to very quickly and accurately figure out the answer even if we don't have access to a calculator. And we saw those examples being shown through the question we just solved. So hopefully that was of some help to you when you tackle future addition related questions. Thanks everyone so much for listening.